All right, so I didn't anticipate being gone, and so I'm gonna make this video just to kind of talk you through the review topics. We actually went through most of the difficult part yesterday, thankfully, so the easier part is this back page. Um, so what we talked about yesterday was 5-1, which is the exponent rules, 5-2 day one, which was like, is it a polynomial? What's the standard form? Um, what's the degree? What's the leading coefficient? What's the constant? What type is it? All that stuff. Any of those terms that you don't remember, put them onto your red card. That red card's going to be as good a resource to you as you make it. We also talked about 5-2 day two, which was the red charts end behavior, knowing if the right end's going up or down based on the leading coefficient and deciding if the left end is doing the same thing or the opposite thing based on the degree. We talked about finding the max and mins, which are x, y points. And then we talked about the intervals of increasing and decreasing um, based on just the x values of those max and mins. So if those are the confusing topics, revisit the notes from yesterday. The ones I put up on the board are in the filled in notes. And um, then also watch the video there's two in the video folder of the chapter five resources. They are day one and day two, which covers the front and the back. So uh, we're still gonna have our test Wednesday because you have so many resources to use in my absence that uh, we're just gonna stick with the plan. Okay, so the easier part is today and that's five, three. That's where you learn to add, subtract and multiply polynomials. Keep in mind that when you are adding or subtracting, you do not change the powers. You are simply going to be um, combining like terms. So some of you just didn't pay attention on the quiz to what it said to do. If you have 2x, let's say squared plus 3x, and you are adding it to 5x squared minus 4x plus one, let's say, you have to look and say, okay, this is adding. I'm not gonna FOIL, I'm not gonna distribute, I'm not gonna do the chart. I am going to combine like terms. I'm gonna find the highest power of my x, and in this case, that's the squareds, and I'm gonna add them. I don't even have to change the sign or anything because it's addition. So two plus five, just like forever, is seven x squared. Here's a three x minus four x. And so those are both plain x's. Three minus one is negative one x. You don't have to write the one. And then the only number I have is the one. So I would have that at the end. Now, let's say you had that exact same problem, but it was subtraction instead. My pen just decided to die. Um, as always. If it's subtraction in between, you still are not gonna change the powers. You still are going to be just doing like terms. Um, no idea why this will not change. It doesn't really matter that it won't change color, except now I'm mad because my pen won't work. So if I had two X squared plus three X, we're just going purple, minus five X squared minus four X plus one. So same problem as this guy, except that it is po um, positive instead of negative. My highlighter doesn't work either, I'm kind of sad. So what you have to do is pretend there's a negative one out here and distribute that to all these other terms. Then I'll have still this two X squared plus three X, and then this will distribute, and these will become positive, and this will become negative. Now you just go back and do the same thing. 2x squared minus 5x squared is negative 3x squared. 3x plus 4x is 7x. And then a minus 1 is just a minus 1. So even though the problems are really similar, the answers are really different because in one you are adding and in one you are subtracting. Um, so that is addition and subtraction. So mostly you just have to pay attention to whether there's an adding or subtracting in between or not. Because when there's nothing in between, that's when you actually have to stop and do the multiplication. And that's when your powers are gonna start to change. So let's take a look. And so we might as well 
just use the same one. Say you had this times this, and now I know they're multiplied because they are just right next to each other. There's nothing in between. So with this, I would probably use a chart. I'm gonna go down here below this line. So I would have my 5x squared, my minus 4x, and my plus one. I'd create a chart for those. And then down the side, I'll have my 2x squared and my 3x. So here, these two become 10x to the fourth. And I can't use my highlighter still for some reason because pen is not working. So in this box right here, I'm going to be multiplying negative 4x times 2x squared. So it becomes negative 8x to the third. And then here I'm multiplying 1 times 2x squared. Bottom row, I'm taking 3x times 5x squared, so 15x cubed, and see how these match up. Next one is going to be negative 12x squared, and these match up, and the last one's going to be a 3x. So I start in my top left, that'll be my highest power. Then I combine here, 15 minus 8 is just going to be 7x cubed, and now I'm not changing the powers anymore because I'm not filling in the chart. I am just putting the powers, like collecting the like terms. My next diag diagonal is x squared. So negative 12 plus 2, and then a plus 3x. And then this one doesn't have a constant because it just doesn't. So that's the adding, subtracting, multiplying. Um, sometimes you have to do foiling. And keep in mind that if you don't love foiling, if you were taking this times this, you can either foil first, outside, inside, last, and then combine these. Or if that does not make sense to you, but the chart does, you can create a chart. 3x plus 1 up above and x minus 7 down the side. This is going to give me the same answers. But if that process makes more sense to you, then you're good to go. 3x squared minus 20x minus 7. So they're the same because they're just different ways of multiplying. So that was um, 5, 3. And then we did, what else did we do? Let me look. Um, factoring to solve, which I'm not going to go through all the factoring methods, but in 5, 4, I would remind you that you always check for a GCF, the got to check first, as I like to call it. So check that. If you are lost and confused, that's usually why. And then if it's two terms, the only time that it's going to reduce or, um, excuse me, factor is if it's something squared minus something else squared. And then if that's the case, then it breaks down into the square root of this, which is A, square root of this, which is B. So it's their sum and their difference. That's not new. Um, if there's three terms, then you're going to unfoil using the yellow card um, where you have like x squared minus 3x minus 10. And you look for the factor pairs of 10 that subtract to be 3. So it would be these guys and so on. Um, so in that case, I would end up with x minus 5 and an x plus 2 in order to get that. And then keep in mind that if it asks you to factor, that's your answer. If it asks you for the zeros or the solutions, then that's when you look at what makes x minus 5 equals 0 and the answer solution or 0 is 5. What makes x plus 2 equals 0? Well, that will happen if x is negative 2. So pay attention to whether it's asking about solutions or factors. And lastly, if you have four terms, you have to utilize grouping. And grouping is where you split it down the middle. So again, watch the video going over the back of the worksheet from the review. It'll explain how to do all of them, but it'll always focus on how many terms are there because that's how you decide which method to use. But you want to pull out a GCF first if that exists. And then that factoring is key for 5-5. Five, five. We learned two types. Type 1 
was where you factored the GCF out in front of the rest. And then you would have something down here that would potentially cancel. So if you don't really remember doing that, you can look at your 5-4 worksheet or you can look at number 22 on the review and watch the video on how to do that. The other kind that we did, the other type, was where you would have the top and you would foil that out. Excuse me, you would factor that out. But the bottom was like also um, had a plus or minus in it. And then once you were done, one of these would cancel. And if you're not clear on what I'm talking about, then look at number 23 on the review and watch that part of the video. I just don't want to take up your time to do this and then also go back through the video. So um, I'm just looking. And then keep in mind that you don't have to do number 31. So number 31, you can skip. So you don't have to do that because I'm not going to have you do a word problem on the test. So I don't need you to practice it right now. So those are the skills that are in five, three through five, five. It seems like a lot, but if you go back through the worksheet, it's just, this is actually a part most people did really well on with the quiz was the adding, subtracting, and multiplying. So this all took you up through the quiz. And the only things we've done since then are these last two things. So between this, I'll put this into the filled in notes as well, but between this video and then the videos for the front and the video for the back of the review, I think you can probably get the help you need um, also talk to your friends in class because they're smart and they can help you. And then on Wednesday, we'll knock this test out and just call it good for 2022. Can't wait to see you. Bye guys.